Good morning, kids. <clears throat> Today is the third lecture of our chapter, Reproduction and Organisms. And uh, this also happens to be the last lecture for this particular chapter. Right, it's a quite small chapter given in your NCRT. But as I have mentioned over and over again, that all the state board children also need to refer to this particular chapter from the knowledge perspective. Okay, right. Now, <clears throat> in the previous two lectures, we have discussed with something regards to sexuality in organisms. We have also discussed with regards to gamete formation. We have also discussed how the gametes are transferred. Okay. Now today we will be talking about something called as fertilization. Now kids, we all know that fertilization is nothing but it is fusion of male and female gametes to form a diploid zygote. Okay. And the event, what I'm referring to is called as syngamy. I'm repeating again, when we use the word fertilization, remember fertilization is nothing but, it is fusion of male and female gametes. And the event is also called as syngamy. Okay, right. Now, when we talk about fertilization, there are two types of fertilization. The first one is said to be external fertilization. Now let us understand first the meaning of the word external. Okay. Now listen. When I say external, male and female gametes both are released out of the body. I'm repeating. When I say external fertilization, male and female gametes are released out of the body. For example, in the case of fishes, okay, there are multiple eggs and there are multiple male gametes which are released in the water. And these male gametes will fertilize the egg. Okay, right. So, when the fertilization occurs outside the body, we call that fertilization as external fertilization. Okay. Now, in the case of algae, you must have heard about something called as green algae. Now, these green algae perform external fertilization. Okay. And when I say external fertilization, remember that the male and the female. Okay, right are near equal in size. If we recollect, we have talked about something called as isogamy, right? Okay, which is normally observed in green algae. It is also observed in bony fishes and it is also observed in frogs, okay? Now, as I told you, the male and the female gametes are released in the medium, that is external medium like water, okay? The fertilization occurs outside the body. Now, <clears throat> The disadvantage of this particular external fertilization is the organism has to produce large number of gametes. So, hum aise bolenge ki bohat sara energy jo hai, wo waste ho jata hai in preparing thousands of gametes. Okay. Now, why thousands of gametes are required? Because, <clears throat> let us understand that many gametes would be destroyed during the event of fertilization and Another important point, the progeny which is formed or the offspring which is formed, right, is again not inside the body of the female, but it is now out for the predators to attack. Okay. So, we have seen that when there is an external fertilization, the progeny number is also very high. Okay. It is very high because the rate of survival is very low because they are all vulnerable for the attack from predators, okay? Just say for example, when we talk about frogs, so normally now this is rainy season, <clears throat> if you happen to go out and if you see a particular pond, you will see a lot structures like and they are very many because they eat predators, okay? So in the rate of survival, in external fertilization, it is very low, therefore, large number of offsprings are produced, okay? Now, so evolution took place and we got a new type of fertilization which is called as internal fertilization. Now, please remember, internal fertilization is very, very, I can say, safe. The reason is the ovum or an egg is always inside, is always present inside the body of the female. So that egg is 100% protected from the predators. But in this case, the male gametes have to be motile. So we have to remember that whenever we talk about internal fertilization, okay, 
the female gamete is non motile whereas the male gametes are usually motile okay remember that very very well okay and this kind of fertilization is observed in fungi or fungi whatever you call it as higher animals like birds reptiles mammals etc and majority of plants now <clears throat> if you just recollect we have done with something called as siphonogamy in the case of angiosperms so in the case of bryophyta pteridophyta gymnosperms and angiosperms the fertilization is internal advantages of internal fertilization is that zygote which is formed okay right is protected embryo which is formed is protected okay the young ones which are formed are protected and most important the initial nutrition of that particular young one is taken from the female but the most important thing is that protection is the one which is the major concern and that is taken care over here in internal fertilization is it okay right now <clears throat> this was with regards to fertilization where we are talking about fusion of male and female gametes okay but there is an unusual method by which <clears throat> offsprings are produced without fertilization i am using the word without fertilization and listen <clears throat> whenever offsprings are produced without fertilization we call that event as parthenogenesis genesis understand the meaning parthenogen <clears throat> is a latin word which means virgin and genesis is nothing but to give birth or formation so without fertilization right if a progeny is formed then we will be using the event called as parthenogenesis okay now this parthenogenesis is observed in honey bees it is also observed in a microscopic organism Called as roti first. Roti का मतलब है wheel, right? So <coughs> parthenogenesis are seen in roti first or roti first, whatever you call it as. Okay, it is seen in honey bees, where fertilization is not required. Okay, but still, young ones are formed directly from an egg. Okay, so this particular event is called as parthenogenesis. now if you actually <clears throat> check out your ncert book and i am on page number 14 of your ncert i hope that we all are going to refer more through ncert so you can see that honey bees rotifers so over there rotifers are nothing but they are microscopic small small organisms or animals okay right then you can see honey bees and some lizards and even in the case of turkey which happens to be a bird right you can have parthenogenesis the female gamete is directly converted into an young one or i can say offspring okay so we call this as <coughs> fertilization the next event when we talk about reproduction in organisms okay kids just a moment okay <clears throat> now the next thing which we are going to learn is something called as post fertilization changes yani fertilization ke baad exactly kya hota hai now we all know that after fertilization there is an important event which is nothing but formation of zygote okay so can i say zygote is nothing but it is a fusion product of male and female gamete and therefore it is said to be diploid okay now most of the organisms they will have diploid zygote okay and this diploid zygote will definitely divide and redivide and it will develop into an embryo okay now if you just recollect your 11th standard ka life cycle pattern in the chapter called as kingdom planting you must have heard about something called as haplontic life cycle diplontic life cycle haplo diplontic life cycle etc okay now so we can say that 
zygote is the most important connecting link okay between one generation and the next generation parents ne gametes banaya wo gamete ka fusion karke humko diploid zygote mila aur wo diploid zygote abhi aage jaake ek naye individual mein develop hone wala hai okay okay so zygote is very very important or your ncrt says that it is the connecting link between two generations absolutely fine okay so that is the first event in post fertilization era or i can say post fertilization changes the second event is said to be embryogenesis now when i use the word embryogenesis it is nothing but it is formation of embryo now the development of embryo in animals is different and the development of embryo in plants is different so whenever we talk about <coughs> development of embryo outside the body i repeat development of embryo outside the body we call it as oviparous okay to yaad rakhne ka ki jab bhi embryo ka development female ke body ke bahar hota hai jaise for example mere paas ek egg hai jo fertilized hai right now you must have seen that an egg is covered by a calcareous cell okay now that egg is definitely having the protective covering so that the inside development of embryo is taken care of okay yani wo environment se bachayega bahut sare predators se bhi wo bacha sakta hai okay to jab bhi embryo ka development female ke body ke bahar hota hai ya external environment mein hota hai hum usko bolte hain oviparous okay and when it occurs <coughs> Inside the body, it is called as viviparous. For example, हमारे पास यानी human beings में मैं ऐसे बोलूँगा कि the development of embryo occurs within the body of the female. Reason, pro number one, as I told you, proper protection. Number two, <coughs> supply of nutrients so that the development of the baby is proper. Okay, right. So that is called as viviparous. Getting it? So oviparous is development of embryo. into young ones outside the body or outside in external uh, environment and whenever it occurs within the body of the female we call it as viviparous okay now <clears throat> when we talk about plants you all know in the case of angiosperms can i say the development of embryo occurs within a structure called as seed and these seeds are present within a very important structure called as fruit and can i say the fruit is going to provide nutrition to the developing seed and within the seed there is a very very important structure you must have heard about it called as endosperm that endosperm will definitely give i can say nutrition to the developing embryo and once the embryo is embryo is developed the seed is ready for seed germination okay and uh, <clears throat> if you remember the fruit wall is called as peri Pod, which can be either fleshy or it can be dry. Okay, in the case of mango, the pericarp is fleshy. It will provide nutrition to the developing embryo or the seed. I'm seed bowl raw because seed is attached to the fruit wall with the help of a structure called as placenta. Or usse wo nutrition leta hai seed ke paas jata hai. Or seed ke andar jo embryo hai usko nutrition milta hai. Now, if you come to your NCERT book, page number sixteen. there is a diagram <coughs> given 1.8 now if you observe the first diagram is of pisum sativum and you can see that over there s is nothing but seed and p stands for pericarp that is pericarp is nothing but the fruit wall then <coughs> the another example they have given again over there that is seed and pericarp another example can you see there is again s stands for seed and p stands for pericarp that is the fruit wall then again the same thing okay so this is <clears throat> in the case of higher plants or i can say angiosperms okay with this the chapter is over i want you all to please go through the ncrt textbook <clears throat> properly read line by line word by word so that you can score maximum marks in your entrance exam okay kids right with this reproduction in organisms is over from ncrt book okay Take care. God bless you all. Bye.